Hi, you've clicked on to today's Tropical Tidbit for Friday. We've got a couple of systems to deal with in the Atlantic today. First one affecting land right now is Tropical Depression 8 over here in the Western Caribbean Caribbean scraping the northern coast of Honduras over here. You can see it looks pretty nice. We've got a concentrated area of convection here. You can see outflow expanding away on all sides of it here and it's uh, definitely overcome some of the dryer that it was dealing with and looks a lot nicer and compact today. The recon plane just got in there and this is going to be something that tries to skirt the coast. The centers in here, this is the problem with it. The only real problem is that in a perfect world we would want the surface center right in here, centered, centered under the middle level circulation in the center of the convective mass. Instead, it's down here in the southeast quadrant, which means that this isn't quite fully stacked, and this is going to stay just offshore here probably, which is something that could allow it to maintain strength or strengthen a little bit if it stays offshore by about 50 miles and moves into Belize, which means we could see this ramp up to maybe a 50 to 60 mile per hour tropical storm if it does stay offshore and has another 36 hours or so over the water before it makes landfall in Belize and this should be something that tries to get a little bit stronger but is too close to the land to pull off extraordinary strengthening and should be mostly a rain event in this area. However, as long as it remains offshore here, these compact little systems can wind up a little bit so we could see a moderate to strong tropical storm by the time it gets in here if the center does indeed stay far enough offshore. It could try to get pulled in as well. Sometimes frictional effects will try to pull this in and keep this really close to the coast here and uh, as long as it's not vertically stacked with the mid-level center, that may inhibit its strengthening as well. So we may not see it get too awful strong, but a moderate tropical storm in here is possible, and thus these folks should keep an eye out for a little bit of a stronger wind than they might have expected, but mainly a rain event in this area of the world as this moves on shore. We can see from the water vapor imagery here that this area of the Caribbean has really moistened up a lot more than it was during the last couple of days due to the MJO coming back over this area of the world, keeping upward motion going, and this area has become a lot more favorable. You can see the anticyclonic flow around this area, and we have an upper low over here backing away, and an upper low over here backing away, which leaves the air to expand over the storm in here. So this environment that we've been talking about is conducive for this to cause mischief, and we do indeed have the storm in here, as we said, would happen as this came west, and this is now something that is threatening these areas. Not too strong of a storm, but is worthy to note, and will bring these folks some rain. I know some folks down there are wanting the rain, so this is some good news, but beware for potentially stronger winds than you might expect here in Belize if this remains offshore by 50 miles or so over the next couple of days. Now let's look over at our second system out here in Vest 97L. This is a broad circulation that's coming across now. Very well defined. It is large, which means development is going to be slow here, and there is still some dry Saharan air wrapped up with it, but you can see that as it moves west here, 50 west is right about here, 50 longitude. This is now getting towards this area, and the water is very warm in here. It's now starting to enter all of that warm water, and look what happens to the dry air once we start to get far enough west. Notice all the stratocumulus in this field of strato-Q over here. Notice that past this line, what happens to it? There's no strato-Q over here. That's because the water is a lot warmer over here and the atmosphere is more unstable. So you can see that directly north of it here, the dry air starts to filter out. And by the time we get over here and the storm gets farther west, it has an opportunity to start mixing out that dry air. And you can see the convection is trying to fire with it in the northwest quad as it comes west. So it's trying to moisten its environment. And over the warm water, this looks like it's going to try to ramp up in here and start to look like something more tropical in nature as it gets in here, something that could become a storm as time goes on. Now here's a buoy that 97L passed just south of last night, brought the pressure down nicely, almost down to 1,007 millibars here, and it wasn't even a direct pass through the center. So this is a low pressure area that means business out here, and it's going to be something to watch carefully as it comes west, probably going to try to develop. Now if we're going to talk about the track of this thing, we're going to be watching where the center develops. Probably in here, it looks like it's going to, the way the high is set up right now in the Atlantic, uh, with the center of it somewhere out here, this is probably going to start to gain a little bit of latitude. This upper low in here is providing a little bit of a weakness, which is shaving off the western periphery of this ridge temporarily, which means they should start to gain a little bit of latitude, probably going to 
across the Antilles Islands near Martinique or Dominica. It's not going to gain a whole lot of latitude too fast here, and I'm thinking right now it should pass south of Puerto Rico as opposed to over it or north of it. And that could change, but it looks like it's going to pass south, and that leaves it two real options. Either it it moves over Hispaniola and into Florida and up the southeast coast, or it moves just south of Hispaniola, threads the needle near Cuba, and then gets into the eastern Gulf of Mexico, or the two main, po two main possibilities I'm seeing here. That's not to say that a curve up into the Carolinas can't happen. That is possible. But the way things are looking right now, it looks like this area is the main area to watch for this coming ashore here, Florida into the eastern Gulf. And we're going to look at this because the steering pattern is a little bit complex here. We have the UK Met out at day four. We have a trough coming across eastern Canada and New England, and it has the storm down here just south of Hispaniola. The big question for the short-term details of the track, which ultimately affect the long-term, is whether this trough is going to be strong enough and whether the storm will be strong enough to be pulled farther north by this trough, which means would it get pulled north of Hispaniola and into the Bahamas, at which point it could threaten Florida after this trough pulls out. That's the question. The thing about these troughs is they don't like to hang around very long as they dig into the western Atlantic, so they end up uh, scooting out to sea real quick and then by the time we get out to day six the trough is gone lifted out we have a trailing weakness behind the Atlantic Ridge builds back in and then we have the weakness between the two ridges the Texas Ridge and then the ridge out in the Atlantic for which the storm moves right up into the southeast and the storm is now south of Cuba on the UK Met eventually moving into the Gulf and that's the situation where it could come in farther south now again if we look at the overall pattern here the problem that we're dealing with is that if the storm develops, it's most likely going to be a threat to the United States somewhere along the southeast coast and probably some Caribbean islands along the way. Again, we have lots of troughing over Alaska. This is the 8 to 10 day 500 millibar mean European on the left, GFS on the right. We have all the troughing over Siberia and Alaska, which forces the pumping of the ridge over southern western Canada and the western United States, and the ridge gets repositioned over the Rockies farther west than it has been. The Atlantic Ridge builds in from the east. The mean break is again right in between here. And if the break is in between, this is where the storm is going to try to go, path of least resistance, and you can see where the model has the storm here. The Europeans a little bit farther east with it on its zero z run but the, the the message here is that the break is over the united states if the break is over the united states and the storm is coming out of this area it's going to move right into the states here and it's probably going to hit a couple of caribbean islands as well so no matter what this is going to be a big threat to land the question is which part of the land it affects and to get into the to get into the gulf it would be an eastern gulf storm the, the model for this system is that it's going to be a storm for the Mississippi Delta eastward. It's not going to hit western Louisiana and Texas, and the reason I say that is because if you look up here, see all the ridging over northeast Asia. This is forcing the troughing to remain entrenched over Alaska and here, which means it's going to be pretty hard to get this ridge farther west than the Rockies, and it's not going to want to move much farther west than that anyway, because then it starts running into the Pacific Ocean, and it's not going to want to move over there because the ridge likes to stay over the land where there's a lot of heat and solar heating and it's not going to want to move much from the Rockies there, which means that if we have the ridge over the Rockies, the storm's not going to move into Texas or western Louisiana. So it's going to be a Mississippi eastward storm, so it would be the eastern Gulf if it gets into the Gulf, or Florida and the southeast here. Perhaps a ride up the eastern seaboard in the most eastern scenario. So overall, this is a pattern that is dangerous, that we've been talking about for quite a while now, that is going to bring the storm into land if it develops. And we can see that it, 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 looks, it looks ready to try to develop as it comes off this way. Maybe fairly slow. It could be either a storm that gets north of Hispaniola into Florida, or it could sneak south and get into the eastern Gulf. I'm not exactly sure which one that is yet. We need to see how fast this tries to develop, what it looks like in here by the time it gets into the Caribbean, whether it's already trying to become a storm or whether it's still weak like some of the others have been that attempted development in there. One thing to notice is that right now the models are focused over the islands right at this time, and the models this year have consistently had a northern bias with the systems coming out of the eastern Atlantic 
panic, and it is possible that the western shift will continue and we will see the models focus more south, just south of the Caribbean islands and more into the eastern gulf with time, but we will see if that model bias continues. Either way, folks in the Leeward Islands probably not going to get too bad of a storm out of this, but it will probably be trying to ramp up more in here. Puerto Rico may get scraped by the northern side of this. Hispaniola could still be in the bullseye, depending on what happens here. Could bring a lot of rain to these folks, whether it's a strong storm or not. The heavy rains can cause deadly floods in Haiti and the Dominican Republic, and thus these, these folks in here should keep a close eye on this. Cuba and perhaps even Jamaica as well, as well as the Bahamas and Florida. This whole area here uh, could see this storm. It's going to be a land impact if it does develop. Alright, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.